In Nuke 13.1, we continue to focus on supporting artists with great new tools, fostering new and established workflows, and updating our file format support and pipeline standards, allowing our users to do what they do best, making amazing images. For Nuke 13.1, we've completely redesigned Nuke's 3D handles, making them more user-friendly, extending the functionality, and bringing them in line with other 3D applications. These improvements make it quick and easy to work with Nuke's 3D system, making it easier to place 3D objects exactly where you want them, directly in the viewer. The new 3D transform handles in Nuke now match those in Kintana, making it seamless when working between the two applications. This introduces a new widget for transforming an object on multiple axes. The ability to change the size of the transform handle in the viewer using hotkeys and updated the pivot point control, enabling you to move the pivot point without moving your geometry. We have added a choice of hotkeys to switch between different transform modes based on different commonly used 3D software packages, and a new toolbar for selecting the geometry transform tools, making it easier to move between Nuke and other 3D applications without interrupting your workflow. You also have the ability to manipulate geometry in object, screen, or world space, making it effortless to place geometry wherever you want inside of Nuke. These these upgrades to the 3D transform handles should make working inside of Nuke's 3D system much faster and easier. Move seamlessly between Nuke and your 3D tool of choice and quickly place your 3D objects exactly where you want them to be. We have two new Node Graph user experience features in Nuke 13.1 to empower artists. The backdrop node has been updated to allow you to resize it from any of the four corners, making it a lot easier to adjust the backdrop behind groups of nodes, allowing you to keep your scripts organized exactly how you wish. We are also happy to be including a long-awaited and requested feature, Nuke Shake to Disconnect. Simply shake a node to disconnect it from the pipe. Shake functionality is on by default, but as you would expect, we've included sensitivity controls as well as the ability to turn it on and off in the preferences. Shake to Disconnect works with single node selection, selection of nodes across different branches, or chains of nodes. Shake to Disconnect will make it quick and simple to move selections of your scripts around, disconnecting and reconnecting with ease. In 13.1, we have some great updates to the native Cryptomat node introduced in Nuke 13, plus the addition of a brand new native version of the Encryptomat node, enabling you to do a lot more with Cryptomats in Nuke 13.1. We have extended the Cryptomat wildcard syntax, introducing a new remove expression using the minus sign for the mat list. This allows you to remove Cryptomats from the selection in the mat list, enabling you to make complex mat selections in a few lines without having to individually select multiple mats. The new native version of the Encryptomat node allows you to encode your own Cryptomats natively within Nuke. The Encryptomat node allows you to take any alpha input and convert it into an Encryptomat selectable ID. This can then be selected for use downstream using the Encryptomat node. This new mat can be merged with existing Cryptomats, optionally being merged over or under them, and can be placed in an existing Cryptomat layer, or a new one can be created in the Encryptomat node. This can be a powerful way to bundle up the output of multiple nodes into a single stream usable throughout your script, or can be rendered and shared across your team. Whether or not you're working with rendered cryptomats, using Encryptomat as a way to encode custom mats makes it easy to pass the mats around and reuse them anywhere within your node graph. With the successful introduction of the copycat and inference nodes in Nuke 13, we have continued to develop and are leveling up our machine learning tools. Nuke 13.1 introduces the ability to load third-party PyTorch models in the inference node. This allows Nuke to run PyTorch models trained outside of Copycat, opening Nuke up to a wide range of community and research developed PyTorch models, enabling you to further leverage the power of machine learning natively inside Nuke. The new Cat File Creator node can create custom cat files from PyTorch models in the Torch script format. These can be loaded and run inside the Inference node. With the new Cat File Creator node and the Inference node, Third-party models can be integrated into Nuke, converted into tools with modifiable knobs, and shared across a team. This new workflow will make it easier to use machine learning in pipelines and get even more out of machine learning in Nuke. Additionally, we have refined the Copycat training network, making Copycat produce more accurate results and get to them faster. We have also enabled the ability to run Copycat on a remote workstation, so you don't have to interrupt your workflow to train Copycat networks.
In this release, we have introduced Unreal Reader, a new beta feature in Nuke 13.1 which connects NukeX to an Unreal Engine session. This new node allows artists to quickly and easily generate live renders from Unreal Engine and control the results in Nuke in real time, breaking objects into layers, separating passes, building environment maps, and tweaking shot framing. The Unreal Reader node synchronizes Nuke with a sequence in your Unreal map and streams the render passes directly into Nuke. Unreal Reader connects over a TCP IP connection, allowing Unreal Engine to be running on the same machine as Nuke or on another machine, even across different operating systems. The live link between Nuke and Unreal makes it easy for artists to always see the latest Unreal changes directly in their Nuke script. The new Unreal Reader in Nuke 13.1 accelerates the pipeline for getting image data from Unreal into NukeX, enabling you to combine the speed and efficiency of real-time rendering with the flexibility and fine-grained control available in Nuke's node graph. Building on the monitor outwork in Nuke 13.0, we have made the monitor output properties more intuitive as well as adding some new functionality, trying to ensure review sessions are as productive as possible. In this release, we are introducing the ability to enable annotations and the mouse cursor on monitor out devices and the floating window. This makes review sessions simpler, allowing everyone to point and annotate clearly and accurately in review sessions. There are individual controls to display the mouse cursor and or annotations, as well as preferences to define the mouse cursor size. We have also added a new horizontal flop option, which is great for gaining a new perspective on your image. Along with this, we have also updated the Arja and Blackmagic SDKs, allowing you to work with the latest cards and format options, making review sessions more productive and ensuring that everyone in the team is always on the same page. As Nuke Studio and Hero projects become bigger and more complex, they take longer to load, which can become a bottleneck to your workflow. To improve this, we have started a series of incremental improvements across releases beginning in 13.1 to reduce the amount of time a project takes to load into the timeline. With these initial improvements, we are currently seeing a reduction in time of around 25-30% to when loading in a project saved in 13.1. We will continue with these optimizations and hope to see even greater reduction in these times later in the 13 development cycle. To help users manage these increasingly complex projects or episodic content, we have added the ability to copy and paste clips and sequences between projects, making working with multiple projects easier. You can now quickly and easily move clips, sequences, or even complex bin structures from one project to another, giving you freedom to move between projects to suit your workflow. In this release, we are bringing five new soft effects to Hero and Nuke Studio, as well as more functionality to pre-existing ones. The Modify Metadata soft effect allows users to easily add new metadata values and modify existing ones in different areas throughout the timeline. You can add metadata to each plate individually, or you can add metadata to a whole sequence. The addition of the new Color Lookup soft effect to the timeline enables artists to color correct using curves and do adjustments using lookup tables. The Color Lookup soft effect works exactly the same way as the equivalent node in the node graph. All the OCIO soft effects are now under the new OCIO menu, and three new soft effects have been added to the timeline. OCIO Display, OCIO Log Convert, and OCIO Look Transform. All the color soft effects in the timeline now include the unpremolt and mix knobs for better and more precise color workflows. Users are now able to unpremultiply a clip or track's RGB channels by its alpha channel, allowing you to make sure your color work and edges always stay perfect. And the mix knob lets you adjust the influence of any color corrections so you can address those split the difference notes from your clients. With the addition of all these new soft effects, we have added a new selection tool which only selects soft effects. This makes it easier when working with complex timelines to ensure you select only the soft effects without manipulating your track items. We know locked edits are rare as timelines keep evolving. One difficulty when sequences and timelines change is making sure you can apply all the soft effects and changes to the new edit. To help facilitate users to edit manage, move, or update soft effects between different versions of sequences, we have added new options to paste soft effects. When pasting, you now have the option to override current soft effects. 
a completely new way to paste soft effects sequentially onto your new edit, as well as the classic operation. These user experience improvements will make it easier than ever to stay on top of the ever-changing and evolving edits. For the users working between the node graph and the timeline, we have introduced the ability to copy and paste between the two. Artists can now copy and paste any track items and soft effects from the timeline to the node graph, as well as copy nodes with the equivalent soft effects to the sequence in the timeline. This new functionality makes it seamless to move between the timeline and the node graph using whichever context works best for you. There is also an updated playhead in Nuke Studio and Hero that indicates which timeline tracks are loaded into each buffer, making it faster and easier to compare clips and see exactly what you're reviewing from your timeline in the viewer. One of the most requested timeline features has been the ability to access custom metadata on burn-ins and tech soft effects, as well as the ability to see per-frame metadata. We have enabled the ability to pass all metadata through into the timeline and consolidated the metadata panels into a new single panel that now supports per-frame metadata. Tags that contain metadata keys are now also visible on the new metadata panel as well as by tech soft effects in the timeline for creating new custom burn-ins. With this work, we are preparing the timeline for future workflow improvements and the future addition of OTIO and metadata management. In this release, we have updated the whole Nuke family to use the new OpenColorIO version 2 and ACES 1.2. OCIO v2 includes a wide range of new features and improvements, many of which are now available in Nuke. All of our OCIO nodes have been updated to use OCIO v2, as well as the OCIO soft effects for use on Nuke Studio's timeline and Hero's timeline. Some of the key feature benefits you will see with the OCIO v2 upgrade are a new GPU implementation means that the image output in the node graph and timeline viewers now match, ensuring the output you are seeing in either viewer is correct and true to the final output, and creating a more unified viewing experience between the viewers. Native ACES support and built-in color transforms, and support for CLF and CTF LUT formats. We have also updated our bundled OCIO configs to add support for ACES 1.2. These updates help ensure Nuke continues to be the source of truth for color throughout your project. In Nuke 13, we introduced Hydra support in Nuke's 3D viewport on Windows and Linux, and we're happy to announce that with Nuke 13.1, we have also extended this support to work with macOS, enabling Mac users to utilize HD Storm as the new viewport renderer. Supporting HD Storm in Nuke's viewport will ensure Nuke has a 3D viewer consistent with other applications in your pipeline, such as Katana, Solaris, or USD view, as well as providing a 3D viewport that much more closely represents the output from the scanline renderer. We have continued to support the latest SDKs in this release and have updated our USD version to 21.05, as well as updating the SDKs for RED, Arja and Blackmagic Designs deck link so that you can get the most out of your pipeline. For Nuke 13.1, we are upgrading to the Blackmagic 2.1 SDK. This includes support for Blackmagic raw files in both Nuke and Nuke Studio, with the ability to load and work with the raw data contained inside of the Blackmagic codec. Users can modify .braw files inside of Nuke or on the timeline and make creative decisions about the look of the shot beyond what was decided on set. Users can non-destructively modify features such as ISO, white balance or exposure as raw data and have greater control over the image in post while maintaining the image quality. This gives you the freedom and flexibility to create the best possible image without introducing additional artifacting in post. All of these changes can be saved into a sidecar file so that you can have complete control over the image while still retaining the original data as it was shot. Additionally, support for the latest Generation 5 color science from Blackmagic ensures the images will display accurately and allows you to work with the latest Blackmagic cameras. We're really excited to bring another production quality file format into the Nuke ecosystem and continue to ensure compositors are able to work with whatever files they want, however they want. I hope you've enjoyed taking a quick look at some of the features in the new Nuke 13.1. Stay safe and as always, happy comping.